So what's up guys? Uh, so we're gonna start, you know, a different kind of uh, idea of video on the channel. So I'm gonna watch my fights from the first one and then we're just gonna go, you know, moving on through different fights of my career. And I'm gonna kind of try to remember uh, how the back, you know, the backstage was, whatever happened behind the fights, what happened during the fight, you know, what was going through my mind uh, in different moments of the fight and just, just go through some things that I remember whatever you know I have memory of and yeah maybe you know you guys enjoy that I really enjoy you know watching fights watching my fights and, and kind of analyzing uh, usually I kind of look at it as a technical uh, you know side but in this occasion I think I'm gonna look a little bit technical but mostly I'm gonna be looking at what uh, was going through my mind, what was going through, you know, what happened also maybe something that I knew that happened during training camp that was something different and, and you know, maybe it's, it's going to be something that played a factor in the fight. So kind of uh, give my take on the fight and, and just look at it, you know, kind of remember, enjoy also, you know, uh, my fights and, and just have fun. Channel, channel, ch channel, 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 baby, channel, channel, ch channel, 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 channel. So we're going to start, my first fight in the UFC was against Michael Graves, uh, actually that was a loss, so I started off uh, my UFC career with a loss, so you know, not, not the best uh, start, but that's something that usually uh, I've always had in my career, I've always had losses, and I've grown after them, that just made me stronger, made me a better fighter, so I think this is a perfect example, after this I, I think I picked up four wins, and and just you know had had a lot of great success in my career after this so let's start off uh Vicente Luque versus Michael Graves so let's watch that so we're gonna start uh right here in the beginning of the fight if you if you look at it uh you know it's they start off showing me and, and my opponent so you see my age I was 23 years old when I started in the UFC and I think it's really funny when you see this photo of mine. This was the first photo I got, actually, you know, a shot of mine in the UFC. And it's funny because I didn't know how the backstage in the UFC was, how, how you know, we have fight week, how I get there and how I have all the kind of media obligations. And also I got to, you know, get photographed by the UFC, get video tape. Uh, they, they take videos and do all kind of different things with the fight kit, you know, with the uniform and everything that we use. So I got to the fight uh, week with a beard and I wasn't ready for that, you know, so they kind of put makeup on me. They made my beard a little bit darker than it was. And this photo looks really, really funny, really different than all the other photos after, you know, from the, for the, after the next fights. So this was pretty, really funny and I didn't know that it was gonna happen like that. So. I, we just did what we went with what was going on. So we go on. Uh, Bruce Buffer is introducing me. You know, that's the first time I get introduced uh, ever by, by Bruce Buffer in a fight. So it's pretty, uh, pretty nice, pretty, I don't know, a different uh, experience. I've always growing up, you know, and, and watching a lot of UFC, wanted to be a UFC fighter myself. I thought that it was awesome to see Bruce Buffer uh, introducing all the other fighters. And now being the first time I'm, I'm uh, getting introduced uh, as a fighter was a different experience. At the same time, I think that was kind of definitely, you know, uh, kind of messed with my nerves, a lot of pressure. My first fight in the UFC, I want to make sure I go out there, get a big win. This, you know, we had all the hype between the Ultimate Fighter 21, Black Zillions versus ATT. So I was defending Black Zillions. Uh, Michael Graves was defending ATT, and and we had had you know the honor of the teams in in game, in play at that moment. So there was a lot of pressure. My first fight, I wanted to get the win for Black Zillions. Uh, a lot of things going on, and and yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it was something that made me kind of freeze. I, I never actually felt like I froze in any fight, but definitely it played something in my mind. It kind of you know I, I felt a little bit nervous. And I just went in there, started the fight, you know, got taken down right away. Uh, I went, was maybe too aggressive on the strike and, and Graves capitalized on that. And right there, look, he's moving on. I, I'm working to, to, you know, get up 
quick, use the cage in, in to help me, you know, get that, uh, get up and, and just get back to striking. That's what I wanted to do against him. Uh, Graves is a big uh, wrestler, you know, I, I knew that. I watched his fights previous to that and I knew that I wanted to keep the fight standing. Uh, he was doing a good game and mixing it up. We, we, he threw a good elbow over there. I was just trying to find my range in striking uh, and especially trying to find my hands. You know, uh, at this point, I think my striking wasn't as developed, you know, as, as it became uh, further after my career. Uh, you know, I, I think now I move a little bit more. I have much more kicks as well. In this beginning, I, I trusted a lot of my hands and kind of just stand in front stand and bang you know and I, I, that's still a little bit of what i do sometimes i get you know uh too excited and just try to trade shots try to box uh, my opponent but in i think in the beginning of my career was more you know more visible after that i started adding a lot of of things a lot of tools kicks and movement uh trying to in and out you know the in and out movement just to kind of get out of range sometimes and yeah, here I was just doing the basic uh, defense, you know, just working the pummeling, trying to put him in the cage instead of me. And he was mixing it up well. As I said before, you know, he threw a nice spinning kick there. I, I was able to block it. It didn't connect, but it was, you know, it looks good on him. Trying to put pressure on, over here on him, you know, quick hands. And again, taken down. That's something that, you know, over during my whole career was something that I've always had to work a lot off, a lot of my wrestling. So in the beginning, you know, I, my wrestling was very basic, very basic. This was my first fight. I got taken down really easy. Uh, after that as well, something I worked on a lot, developed. I still think that I could, you know, get it better, especially considering uh, the division right now, the welterweight division has a lot of top wrestlers. So definitely something that I'll, I will always have to work to try to get better, try to, you know, have that top notch and be able to just keep the fight standing and, and impose my game, which is striking. And as well, something that I started developing and since then, my jiu-jitsu. That's something that is always going to be a, a good tool to use against wrestlers, against guys that want to grapple. And yeah, at this point, I wasn't... What I tried most, as I'm trying right now, is, is just to get up, you know, I just wanted to stand and go to the striking. My jiu-jitsu, I did have the Doris and the Anaconda, but they weren't as sharp as they, they are now. And I usually didn't have them in so many different positions. And yeah, my, my grappling wasn't as developed. So right now I felt I felt like that's something that has developed a lot. So that, that's one of the reasons I really enjoy watching my previous fights. I can see what I've developed and also I can see some things that maybe I should uh, go back to doing, you know. Specifically in this fight, uh, until now I don't see anything that I would go back to. But there are some other fights that I watch and I realize, oh, I stopped doing this, maybe I should go back to that. But, yeah, so I got up again. You know, first round I think he already got me down maybe three times. Clearly, in the point, you know, he's winning. I don't think he has done much damage. Uh, but he has controlled the fight, he has controlled the action, and I'm trying to put the pressure on striking. Right now, I got a good moment, but again, he works the takedown double leg, was able to pick me up. You can see in my face a little bit of frustration. I can see there, I'm, I'm kind of thinking, what am I going to do, you know? What am I going to do about this? Uh, what do I do right now? I'm trying to throw elbows on his, on his arms to see if he breaks that, you know, breaks up that grip and I'm able to you know just release my legs and stand back up and I, I, I really kind of it's hard when we're wrestling that tires both guys you know the guy that is attacking and the guy that is defending but he as a wrestler he's more used to that so he's used to getting kind of fatigued in that way and me as a striker I'm not as used to that kind of fatigue uh, so yeah, the round finished. I popped right back up. I know that at this moment I wanted to show you know my energy. I want I want to show that I'm you know uh, not tired. I'm gonna go back to the second round really aggressive. So in my corner at this point I had uh, George Santiago, a legend. You know uh, he's a great grappler. He's a world champion in MMA. Also Daniel right behind the octagon. 
Uh, he was the he's my corner, my coach since my, this beginning of my career here in Brazil uh, at Cerrado MMA, and also Tyrone Spong, another legend, a beast, you know. And yeah, we had the support. Look, Rashad Evans was supporting uh, the team. Also, Jason Jackson right there. All Black Zealand guys, you know, great team in the past. And when we start second round. I started, you know, trying to pressure. Just was was walking forward as, as I usually do, trying to throw big hands and and try to you know put some damage right there. That's that I'm gonna pause that takedown right there. It was a great single leg. He picked me up and he dropped me down. And by a little bit, you know, uh, by a little bit of adjustment, I try to put a a Dars. I'm not sure if it was a Dars or an Anaconda, but right there, look, you can see there. I'm, I'm walking it. And he was able to spin out of it really good. That's a, that's an anaconda. So I locked that. It was almost, you know, uh, a, a little bit of adjustment. And, and maybe also, you know, props to him. He was able to spin right out of it. But, you know, I was locking it in tight over there. You could see he's, he's struggling a little bit. And then he just got out of it. I lost the lock. So that was, you know, a, a good attempt on my side. I thought it was going to work, but it didn't work out. I was able to at least, you know, kind of try to get up and and try to work. You know, he was a great wrestler. He was taking me down. I knew at this point I lost the first round, so I'm just trying to get back into the fight, you know, get uh, a dominant second round and, and just make sure that I can change, you know, the, the route of the fight, you know, how the fight is going. There he threw an illegal a knee. It wasn't a big deal. The referee kind of saw that. You know, that's that's a tricky rule. So whenever you have your hands your hands down, it's just the fingers, sometimes the tip of the fingers, it's illegal, sometimes it's not. In some commissions, some states, they have that illegal. Others don't have that illegal. So it's kind of tricky. At that point, I knew that there was illegal, so that's why I put my hand. He threw it, connected. I kind of like said okay what are we doing here the referee stopped it but I was fine it wasn't a big you know I, I wasn't kind of like no damage happened I don't think he got deducted any points so I just kept on you know trying to pressure him uh, looking for that big shot I'm always looking to finish the fight you know it's it's sometimes I should game plan more but I'm not so much of a you know looking for the points looking for the strategy I do have a strategy I do have a game plan but it's always kind of taking me into finding, you know, uh, openings and looking for that finish, looking for a submission, looking for a knockout. So that's what I was doing in this fight. Right there, I'm just trying to control a little bit, uh, make sure that he doesn't take me down. I try to work for a takedown at that point, maybe, you know, to score some points. They didn't work out, you know. I, I don't think it's really smart to try to take down a wrestler, it, at least, you know, considering my level and his level. but. I, I always kind of do whatever I, I, I need to do. And at that point, I thought it was a good idea to try to take him down. Didn't work out. He got me down. And again, this is another round. It's going pretty much like the first one. I think this is the second uh, takedown he, he hits. And, you know, we're reaching right now kind of like mid-second round, the half of the round. And, yeah, he's starting to dominate, starting to control the action. He got a takedown. I got up kind of put pressure in the stand-up. We got in the cage, I tried to take down, he defended, he got me down. So yeah, uh, I mean, not much different. Uh, I'm trying to make something happen, you know, trying to find an opening, but whenever he puts me down, he has good control. Not much damage, you know, I, I don't feel like he's doing that much damage, but he's controlling me, so definitely he's, he's uh, getting the points on, on that round. I'm having a hard time getting up. I'm getting tired as well. You know, I, I, I was ready for this kind of fight, preparing to, to fight against Michael Graves. I knew that that's what he was going to try to do. But, yeah, I guess he, he was better prepared than I was to just impose his will, you know, do uh, that wrestling game and, and kind of dominate me. And I was really struggling with getting up. At the, that point, you can see frustration. Uh, I am frustrated. I'm, I don't know what I got to do to get up. I'm trying to look for the cage. I'm trying to get my legs free. He's working really well to control off the legs and off the hip and off the top of my body. 
So he's doing all everything right, and I'm kind of like, I don't have the tools at that point in my career. I didn't have the tools to, you know, just stand up to do what I needed to do to get up. So, yeah, it's it's that that's something that happens a lot in MMA, and many times fans see it as a boring fight. Me as a fan, I gotta tell you, I think it's boring as well. But when I look at it as a technical point of view, you know, as as a fighter, man, he's controlling me, you know, and and this is really hard to do really hard to do physically it takes a lot of energy of whoever is trying to do this game so you know props to him he was able to control me and yeah i'm, I'm trying to again trying to get up he almost takes my back I'm, I'm just rolling to make sure that he doesn't take my back there i could try to get up but he's holding uh he's holding the lock really tight and just trying to control my head so that i I cannot, you know, really stand up and get get free out of the cage and go back to striking. So yeah, he was he was looking for the control, looking for to secure that win. Uh, and yeah, another round for him. We're about 15 seconds to go. I'm gonna see what's gonna go on. Some knees there. That was a good clean knee. That's why I put my finger on the ground. Now he took my my hand out of the ground and threw a perfect knee. So really good work on his side. And yeah, at this point, second round, I'm already kind of like fatigued, frustrated, but trying to think, what am I gonna do? I know that I need a finish. I know it's gotta be either a submission or a knockout. I gotta pull something out of, you know, uh, something out of my mind that I'm, I'm gonna make happen. Uh, I gotta find that opening. So yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking about between these rounds. Also, my corners they were telling me, hey, that's it, two zero to Michael Graves. You gotta make something happen. You gotta you know get that finish now, and otherwise you're gonna lose the fight. So I know that's that's what I gotta do. I have that in my mind, and yeah, let's let's try to put everything uh, into this round and, and just go in there. Michael looked really confident. You could see him in his corner. You know, uh, he looks pretty confident that he's getting the win. All he got to do is go in there and secure that third round and, and probably he would get the win. So it's an interesting moment right now. Let's see. Uh, that's the replay of the illegal knee. In my, like I was playing with the rule. So yeah, it was illegal by the rules that we were playing. But in my mind, like if I could kind of make a rule, I would just take that out of the book, you know. And yeah, fingers are not really a big deal. So there I am, we started off strong. He tried to take down, I was able to defend and put on some pressure in the striking. He went right into the takedown again. I am working in the octagon here, pressuring me in the fence, trying to get me down. This round, I'm, I'm kind of seeing a little bit better, you know, the takedowns, maybe he's tired. That was a good, uh, good connection. By the left hook, he tried to kick me. I counted with the left hook. It kind of landed a little bit, not that clean. Right after that, look, he shoots for the takedown. I was able to defend. And I remember this point. When I defended this, man, I, I went to my goal submission, you know. It's, it's the Dars or the Anaconda always. Right here, I was trying to go to the, Dar, uh, to the Anaconda, actually. And I think they knew, you know. I already had some submissions on these uh, both both submissions and they knew I was going for that so they were defending really well if you see Graves is just you know completely flat on the ground and he has his arm in like trying to hide his arm down and that puts kind of some pressure and I'm not able to lock in neither the Darcy neither the Anaconda so good job on him I was trying to there I, I changed from Anaconda to Darcy he was, if I could free that hand, so if you look, that hand, the left hand that is under his armpit, if I could free that one and get it uh, over his shoulder, I would probably be able to get a, get a finish over there. But again, he knew what, I, what, what he had to do to defend, and I was just wasting energy. At the same time, nowadays my darts, you know, are much better than they were back then, so yeah. Uh, this this just reminds me how I have to keep on drilling and keep on developing, you know, even though I'm really good in these submissions 
I'm just gonna, I just can, you know, get better and improve the more I drill, the more I train. So I'm wasting a lot of useless energy. I should not have, you know, uh, gone towards, you know, trying to submit there because if, if I don't have that, that hand, that arm, the left arm over his shoulder, it's not gonna be finished. Going again to the anaconda, so we, we started the anaconda, we went to the dars, now we go to the anaconda again. Trying to, I almost have the lock, but it's just in the tip of my fingers, so it's not really in. But I'm trying to finish, trying to, you know, uh, put all the, the strength I have. But the thing is, right there, I'm mostly wasting energy. You know, it's it's not close to being some, to being finished and I'm putting a lot of energy into it. So actually I'm wasting my energy. So I started trying to, right there, throw some elbows to the shoulder. Uh, that's something that usually works right there. Look, you see he tried to go for a kind of a single leg and I had a small opening, but I wasn't able to, to capitalize and, and, and really lock the, the anaconda. So I kept on trying to, you know, to at least do some damage try to find an opening if he tried to shoot for a single or something but yeah props to him he was really defending really well i tried again to go to the dars i had a small opening there but didn't didn't capitalize didn't didn't move as fast as i should have and yeah he was he was pretty sneaky you know in that defense this is a round where i think that you know, I was there, I had top control, I was trying to submit, you know, working for that submission. And now we're one minute and a half to finish. I might have taken this round, so maybe, you know, it was maybe 29, 28. He won the first two and I won the, the last one. But right here, look, one minute and a half to go. He's able to reverse position and get on top of me. So yeah, that's definitely not a good place to end, end the fight. We never want to finish the fight being controlled. So, yeah, let's see what goes on from, from here on. So, yeah, I'm trying. I know the fight is, end, is ending. We got one minute to finish. My corners are screaming at me right now. They're letting me know, hey, you got one minute. You're losing this fight. You got to make something happen. And... And I'm trying to think, what am I gonna do? You know, what am I gonna do in one minute? One minute, it's, it's hard. I've done it in the, you know, after this, I've done it. But at that point in my career, I had never, you know, finished the fight in the last round. And it was really, I was just trying to create the situation. I'm down, I gotta stand up and, and maybe go for a knockout. Let's see what, what I can do. But really, really, th this is a moment where it's really frustrating, you know, when the guy's controlling you. Uh, you had the opportunity to try to finish him uh, during this round and didn't get it and now he's just you know got a good position and I don't know I think that that, that taught me a lot uh, of just dealing with moments like this you know uh, and I think these are moments that that are gonna happen through our career especially if if I don't develop my game that's why after this I developed so much my wrestling and my my grappling and also my my striking if you see i was really more of a boxer here and not moving a lot of my my footwork wasn't that good you know i didn't move so much i didn't kick that much so i, I developed a lot of my game after this fight and yeah i think it was a, a big lesson learned and you know, props to Michael Graves. He had a dominating win, but definitely was a, a loss on my side that taught me a lot and that made me the fighter I am now. So, yeah, we're done with this fight. You know, I think now they're showing the replays. And, yeah, I think that was a great fight. You know, I, I like to watch so that I can keep on developing my game, as I said before. And if you guys enjoyed this kind of video, if you guys enjoyed this kind of content, just, you know, uh, like the video, subscribe, and make sure that you leave your comments on whatever I could make better, whatever you want, you guys want to see uh, in, in future videos. Thank you. And yeah, let's, let's keep on, you know, having fun over here.